Welcome to the Mythic Tavern, and today we're taking a look at Priory of the Sacred Flame, a brand new dungeon in the War Within expansion for World of Warcraft. So, what can I say about this dungeon so far from what I've played? Well, I really like it. Uh, I think it's very reminiscent of, I want to say, Scarlet Monastery, which I think for a lot of people, including myself, was obviously one of the top tier classics. Um, you know, the whole monastery thing in Thirstall Glades, I believe it was, and you had different wings. Uh, this is kind of uh, just a one dungeon. There's no real multiple wings. It's pretty straight up. Um, it has a half outdoor and half indoor action going on, which is really cool. And you came out up here as well. And if you're a paladin, you're probably going to love this place. Or if you're a holy priest or anything like that. Because there's a lot of holy stuff. And there's a lot of dangerous holy stuff that you're going to have to be careful of. Now, when we did this dungeon, obviously on the War Within Alpha... Um, it kind of felt a little bit undertuned. Uh, do remember that we are scaled to level 80, and this is a normal difficulty dungeon. So, to be really accurate with how it felt in terms of like boss difficulty or anything like that, I would argue that it's kind of impossible to say because, well, it's not really being tested as a max level dungeon with high level gear, or, you know, it's not a mythic plus. So, but of what I played, it did feel a little bit undertuned, which is why, you know, there's texting. And yeah, but for the most part, basically you begin in this big courtyard, you go up the stairs and you kill a bunch of uh, holy priests and paladins and uh, yeah, man, they have these bubble shields uh, that they put up that they kind of, you know, use as a shield from, from you so and from your party and things like that. So over there, I had a little bit of a skip because I was looking for an ability. You guys didn't really miss anything. Uh, it's the same area, don't worry about that. Uh, the reason I had a little bit of a fade there in and out was because I was looking for my avatar ability because sometimes on a war with an alpha, your keybinds disappear and you have to reset them. Uh, I have literally did not move anywhere. I just didn't want you to watch me looking for my ability because that is a waste of time. So I cut out all the crap that is no... Where, where there's no action, it's boring, it's not interesting. So you, you might see also when we die, like all the runbacks, uh, that will also be cut out. So... Well, this thing is, uh, this dungeon, uh, rather, has a lot of mobs. Uh, it's very easy to pull somebody accidentally from your side or butt pull somebody. You know, if you have a pet, like a hunter, uh, you got to be really careful what you tap target. So, yeah. And another thing, interesting thing here is that there's this uh, yellow ball of holy energy. And when you click on it, if you're not a holy class, I guess, it tells you that someone who has holy powers... Uh, can activate it. So I think if you bring a paladin in here or a holy priest I don't know if they need to be in the holy spec or anything like that But they it does give you a buff because I did this dungeon before with a paladin We don't have any paladins in this group unfortunately or holy priests And we did get a buff from it, but I think it was kind of limited But I thought it was cool that if you had a class that's you know a holy oriented You could benefit from a buff. I don't remember exactly what the buff was or what it gave you uh, but I don't think it was like super duper beneficial, but you know for mythic plus optimization Obviously people probably will try to take that. I don't know how important it's gonna be or if it's not really important at all um, uh, But I just thought something uh, I just thought that was kind of interesting. So these guys over here. They're gonna spam with these traps. I don't know if they're gonna uh, Keep the amount of traps that they put here because it's kind of ridiculous And if you do step into the trap you get rooted for like five seconds I think there's only one time where I step into is where I step into the trap on accident, uh, but other than that, it's pretty uh, pretty easy to avoid them. So uh, you kind of go around, uh, you know, you you clear whatever you kind of can or whatever you need to, and there's these uh, yellow little um, um, circles on the map that you can see, and you gotta go kill the tenants. Uh, now I'm not sure exactly how or what it does when you kill them. But I think it debuffs the boss that's outside in the courtyard. I think if you engage the boss with the lieutenants alive, uh, he might have more abilities or not. I have to double check that. But this kind of reminds me a little bit of Court of Stars where you got to kill that one boss. Where, um, you know, there's lieutenants that come out and if you don't kill them or call them out individually, uh, then uh, you're going to have to fight with the lieutenants, with the boss, with like a 400% damage. Uh, buff and it's practically kind of impossible. So yeah, you kind of forced to kill them in court of stars But in here, I think it's a lot different or a little bit different So I don't think we killed all of them here I think we only killed two or three and there was like one left over and we still killed them I wouldn't be surprised if there was an achievement 
uh, for glory dungeons or something like that where you have to face them with all the buffs or something like that i don't know again uh, it depends uh, because some of these uh, lieutenants are on the way so yeah but um that's pretty much it for that uh but yeah you just kind of go around and you start clearing and you know you guys get to see all these cool abilities and i i am really liking my prop warrior mountain thana uh, by the way i am playing as a uh, earthen you could see the gems on my shoulders that's from the earthen body uh you know they get these cool little gem uh decorations on their body because they're made of rock and elements so yeah and they're a bigger dwarf than other races or the biggest dwarf i should say so it's pretty cool and they get to be on horde <clears throat> there, there, there we go, we have a death knight on his mount, uh, thanks to hero talents. So over here I pull the boss, I believe. Uh, is it a boss? Uh, actually, no, that is not the boss. I don't think it is. I can't remember if that's the boss. I don't believe it is, because he's dying really quickly. Yeah, that's not the boss. Uh, I think that's one of the lieutenants, so, yeah. <clears throat> and he's dead. Yeah, so now we're gonna go to the boss. The boss is also marked as a yellow symbol on the map or a yellow circle. So it doesn't really matter if you go left or right. Uh, the courtyard is symmetrical. There's no real, any kind of crazy asymmetrical features or anything like that. So this guy comes out when you kill one of those people. That's another named lieutenant. So I don't know exactly what triggers them to come out. But yeah, again, I have to do this dungeon a few more times. But I just thought I'd give you a tour guide anyway. It's not, to, it's not meant to be like a super duper detailed guide on how to do these bosses and things like that. It's just kind of meant, to, you know, for demonstration and for fun. And uh, so that way you guys can kind of know what to expect from the dungeons. So over here, as you can see, I just decided to pull this pack because I knew that if I don't pull that pack, somebody else was going to pull it. And uh, yeah, you got yeah, right here, there's a lot of traps. So you got to be really careful. Um, yeah, mage is, the frost mage is pretty good. Uh, I, I love the area we here. Mountain Thane Prot is pretty awesome, man. Uh, lots of good AoE, lots of lightning strikes, lots of, um, like, you kind of feel like you're playing a Thor. Uh, basically a tank Thor, which is I think is a pretty cool fantasy. So, yeah, I kind of like it. Yeah, there I got rooted. It was like five seconds long. Yep, just killing everything away. And in, they're in the bubble shields, so I don't know. Mobs feel a little bit undertuned. So over here, I believe, is the boss. On the mount, I think, is the boss. Yeah. It's Captain something. Captain Delcry. So, yeah, basically, uh, you, he just stuns you. Now, that stun, I'm not sure if that's from his ability. Or if it's because one of the lieutenants is alive, I'm not sure about that. Uh, he's gonna do a rallying cry that you can interrupt. Uh, obviously, it buffs his minions. He's gonna do this thing. Again, I don't know if that's a lieutenant thing. Yeah, it looks like it is. But I don't know if he can kill him separately or if that's part of the fight. I think that's part of the fight. Because the lieutenant on the map is all the way... There's two of them actually on the different sides of the map. So I'm not really sure how uh, that whole thing works. But we didn't have to kill them to finish off the dungeon. We just killed them. Uh, we just cleared one side, cleared whatever lieutenants were on the way, and just finished them off. And then we're going to finish this person off. Yeah, see, this person is not even part of the fight, uh, because we just got a boss kill um, credit. So I'm not sure exactly how they work. Maybe they come out after you kill the lieutenants. I think that's what it is. I think you kill the lieutenants, and then these guards come uh, to see what's going on. And then you kill the guards, and the boss loses uh, uh, abilities, or whatever. It, it, the boss is easier, because right now we, we had to fight the boss with the guards on there. So yeah, I think you kill the lieutenants, then the guards come out, you kill the guards, and then you can fight the boss. But we kind of winged it, so we didn't really care. So over here, we like I like to do LOS. There's going to be a lot of LOS in this dungeon, because these mobs are pretty nasty later on. I think this dungeon is going to be really difficult on both Tyrannical and... Um, what is it called? Uh, fortified? So these guys are really nasty, because they leave this light on the ground, kind of, kind of like a Paladin's Consecrate. Uh, except, uh, like, super bad. You do not want to stand in that, it's, it's really terrible. Uh, so in here, there's a pretty cool room. Again, another LOS pull. Uh, these are not elites. Thankfully. So you can just nuke them. Behind the pillar or whatever, behind the wall. Very easy. So when you kill them, there's gonna be mobs on the left and the right side. 
So the boss is on the top, on the balcony there. To spawn the boss to come down, you have to kill all the guards. So basically, this is just a trash room. So you kill one trash, another trash spawns, you kill another trash, another trash spawns, you kill the rest of the trash, and the boss comes down. It's very simple. I don't know if they're gonna keep it that way, but I'm, I'm assuming they will. Yeah, and you want to stay out of the consecrate ground, of course. So that's one pack. Uh, now we're gonna fight the second, and I think they come down from the staircase after you kill this one from the left side. Yep, there they are, from the left side. Uh, you could just fight them there. You didn't really need to do any kind of LOSing or anything like that. You just kind of go to the side of the staircase and uh, yeah, and just AWE them down. And of course, move away from the Consecrate because it's, it does a lot of damage. So yeah, uh, the mobs inside the cathedral are pretty nasty. Even though I felt like this dungeon was still undetuned. Uh, I can guarantee you that on Fortified, this is going to be a really, really bad time. Yep, and then the guys spawn on the other side again. I think they also come from down the staircase. I couldn't see them because obviously my camera wasn't looking that way, but I think that's where they come from. And then after you kill this last pack, the boss come down, comes down and then you fight him. Um, but overall, uh, so far, I would have to say that I did enjoy this dungeon. Uh, again, it reminds me of Scarlet Monastery. There's a lot of light stuff. So if you kind of missed that, that's pretty cool. And obviously, if you're a holy, holy priest, holy paladin, or just a paladin in general, and you kind of like that whole light fantasy, this is a place for you. So there he goes. He jumps down. Uh, his guard, I guess, doesn't help. He doesn't care about him. So you just fight him. Uh, he's pretty easy. Um, you know, like, this is a probably a good example to, sh to show you why this felt really easy and unattuned. Uh, for the mo most part, it's a tank and spank, but on Tyrannical, I think it's going to be a little rough. He spawns these hammers. Uh, they go around the arena or in the room and they start hitting people and as the time goes I think more and more of them spawn uh, So basically it's kind of like a dodge fight. He's gonna do this uh, big radiant uh, holy light That you got to get out uh, out from or that's gonna hit for a lot and probably uh, One shot you on tyrannical I would imagine. I think this is one of these bosses That's just gonna be Where it's not gonna be very melee friendly because as you guys can see you have to move a lot around uh, around a lot so, this dungeon is not very melee friendly at all, uh, so far from uh, my experience and from what people were telling me in my party that the melee crowd is not really looking forward to doing this. So, if you're going to be doing this for like a good, maximized, efficient composition, obviously the only person that's going to be melee is your tank. You probably want to bring mostly ranged, um, but that's besides the point. So, in here you just clear these this pack of mobs and then you go up the staircase and then you're going to open up a door. And in that doorway, in that hallway after that door, there's gonna be a lot of mobs that you have to do a lot of, um, you're gonna have to do a lot of LOS. Uh, because otherwise, it's gonna be bad news for everybody and people are gonna start pulling mobs left and right on accident. And you'll see what I mean when we get there. So yeah, you um, clear this pack, you open the door. So in here, I made a little mistake. I thought, I thought you have to go LOS here, but then I remembered that when you open this door, you still have to go up the staircase. Um, I was correct, just not about this particular room. I was like, wait, what? Where are the mobs at? I'm like, whoops, I gotta go up. My chat bubbles uh, gave away my uh, noobiness. So yeah, that's how it works. Next wall, LOL. I can't even type properly. I missed the L. So yeah, you're gonna stand behind this brazier and you're gonna pull this first pack with whatever death grip, your heroic throw, you know, your hammer throw from the paladin, or whatever tank you are, uh, and GG. And just snoop them down. And again, as you guys can see, you gotta get away from the light, so there's a lot of movement. Well, not from the light, from the concentrated ground. Uh, I really like the way the mobs look in this dungeon. I really hope that you can get their armor. Uh, because that is an awesome transmog set for like someone that's like a paladin or something like that. Yeah, the, the, that's a really cool looking um, set in my opinion. So the transmog is gonna be really cool. And another cool thing is that they have these elementals that are also light spawns. They look really dope. They're using the Dragonflight models of updated elementals, but they're like light-based, so they look badass. So over here, I decided to be greedy and pull two packs, and then Heroic uh, leaped backwards, and then um, I guess my party thought if I close the door, the map mobs will stop coming. But uh, obviously, that's not going to happen. So, uh, yeah, we just nuke them down, and um, well, that's it. But as you guys can see here, like, it feels a little bit on the tune. So I don't know if it's because of the scaling, 
if it's actually on the tuned or I don't know, or if people are just really good. You know, it's a little bit hard to tell on the beta or on alpha, I should say. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of like what's going on here. So we do wipe here uh, one time, I believe. And we wipe about two or three times on the final boss because the final boss is a little tricky and you'll see why. Uh, the final boss in this dungeon is going to be make it or break it for the key. It's going to be a very, very difficult boss on Tyrannical. I'm telling you that right now. Um, yeah, people are going to have to pop their defensives. People are going to have to like really efficiently use all of their cooldowns in order to survive what that boss does. But I think uh, we did kind of find a, a cheese strat, but the Blizzard could eventually maybe block that strat. And uh, I know I'm kind of speaking riddles here because I didn't really explain the way the boss works, but you'll see when we get there. So over here, I decided to be really greedy and we pulled that giant pat pack. Um, yeah, it was a really big pat. I was like, let's just pull all of them into this corner here. And as you guys can see, I'm almost dead, even with this under two dungeon. But it is a lot of mobs and I'll be honest, I'm not also really the best warrior, so... Or best part we're in the world or anything like that. So I'm kind of uh, winging it. But anyway, we took care of it. So everything's good. And I think we're pretty much done with LOS. We're just going to go in and start killing everything in the room. Because at this point, there's not really much else to do. So we're going to kill the pack on the left just to be safe. Uh, probably if you're doing this on Mythic Plus, you're probably going to want to only clear one side. Uh, unless you absolutely need the mob density. Again, it's going to depend on the mob density and the pathing. But I feel like this room is big enough uh, to, you know, um, skip some mobs here. Uh, but I could also be wrong, so I don't know. Because the way the final boss works is a little weird. I feel like anything that's alive in this hallway, the boss brings to the staircase. Basically, what happens with the final boss, when you get her to 50%, she goes up the staircase. And she gets an absorb shield. And she starts doing insane AoE pulsing damage across the entire party. Which is the reason why you need to blow defensive cooldowns. And you have to climb up the staircase. And on top of that, she calls her minions in. And I think one of the minions from the staircase came from this hallway came up there unless unless you killed them. So anyway, this is a not really a boss, but it's kind of like a mini thing. And I believe we wipe here uh, because I accident I pulled this pack without realizing that our healer didn't have mana. One thing that I really did notice about this is that this big dude that's fighting us is a light undead. Yes, I think it is very safe to say and assume that we're gonna get a playable light undead race very cool uh i've been wanting a uh, light on that for quite a while and i think kalia menethil uh, has been kind of hinting at it for quite a while ever since shadowlands you know there's been a qu couple of quest lines sorry i'm kind of going off tangent here but yeah guys as you guys saw i think we died and i just kind of skipped uh you know the, the run so you guys don't see you don't have to see us running around uh but yeah and there he's dead uh first light on that that i think i ever killed in wow a really cool looking model so over here, we just, I, I, I clear this pack because I believe if you climb up the stairs, you're going to end up aggroing either both of them or one of them on the sides. So we just decided to clear this side. So this is what's going to happen. After this, we're going to fight the boss and we're going to wipe. Uh, spoilers. And um, you'll, you'll see why. Uh, eventually, we'll work out a strat and we kind of cheese the boss. And you will all see how we do that. As I previously explained, at 50% uh, of the HP, the boss goes upstairs and starts doing crazy AoE damage. That's very overtuned or just not properly handled. So I'm standing here because I'm trying to explain to them what's going to happen. I believe. In the battle, I was looking at my phone. So there's the boss, and there's the staircase left and right. So, first mistake that we make is that we blow heroism or lust at the beginning of the boss fight. Now, that is not what you want to do. You want to blow a lust of heroism. At 50% of the boss fight when she has an absorb shield. But, you know, we're new here. We don't really know. We're kind of just playing around. Obviously, no one really knows the strats. But that's how you figure it out. So, you know, we're sitting here popping, you know, cooldowns, whatever. Everything's good. And I don't know where this guy came from. But I think she called upon them. Or somebody pulled that on accident. Either way. I, I think they died. I don't remember. I think someone pulled them. So, you know, she's doing all this crap. And then she went. She just went upstairs. So now, we, well, now we're going upstairs. The healer is already dead. And she's pulsating. This damage right there, radiating. And, you know, it's just non-stop until you kill off that absorb shield. And you cannot stand right on top of her either because of the consecrated ground. And she pulls in these mobs that she spawns. They're non-elites. And as you can imagine, they just whack everybody. So, yeah, this is a shit show now. 
Uh, so this is we obviously wipe here and we're like, whoa, what, what's going on? You know, so Yeah, this is a wipe. But we're gonna cut back on the run here in a second and she also does a blinding light and if you look at her um, When she's doing the blinding light you're gonna get disoriented and stunned for three seconds You have to turn your character away from her from her and make sure he's facing away from her like have your back to the kick to the to the boss instead of your face to the boss and you know a lot of people don't really like those kinds of mechanics and it's very easy to kind of forget about that so over here where we started our you know we ran back we decided to kill this pack on the right side of the staircase before the boss uh so that way no one comes up i think what happened was somebody accidentally pulled that with their butt i don't think they actually actually get called up there but who knows either way uh we killed them anyway to be safe so we're gonna do uh, attempt number two here which is also gonna fail so in here i've decided to pull her like aggro her and then start pulling her towards the staircase i think that's what i started to do yeah and i wanted to see how far she would run i was wanting to bring her upstairs but by the time that i got here she, they, they basically already dps her down to 50 percent. so that was kind of pointless um and you know and they're still running up now we're doing here a little bit better healer's alive um we're not getting any extra mobs those mobs do spawn though that's part of the boss fight the minions do now the elite ones you know there, there, there we go we have healing now this and that you know we're actually doing how the fight is supposed to be done and they're coming in and i you know i have <laughs> i'm trying to grab mobs from both sides man i think for this one what i need to do is uh probably respect my warrior into having a revenge and place it in the middle of the ground because i can't just grab both of these packs like that yeah and we wipe anyway because i think people were looking at the light are oh, looking at her they get stunned and they keep coming in i don't know if they're gonna change this if this is just over two yeah there's the lining light yeah it's gg so attempt number three uh which is where we actually do kill her and i came up with a an idea so i'm just gonna you know live out my fantasy here trying to fight this boss and i'm just gonna die fall flat There you go okay so we were starting again you know not showing the run back because it's a waste of time so this time i positioned myself already up on the staircase so i pull her with heroic throw and then i'm wondering why she's not coming and she keeps casting so you have to have a, an, a, a kick on her at least once so thankfully uh, our mage here did a spell steal so that way she goes up top we're not doing any dps because we're trying to save the dps for upstairs we want to get her to 50%. We want to fight her already upstairs. So we're not forced to run there. Because when we're forced to run there, we're losing DPS on the Absorb Shield. So I'm thinking that Blizzard is, might prevent this because, because this is a really easy cheese strat. So we brought her up up here. Yeah, I mean, at this point, this is close enough, right? So th th there's literally like almost no running here. Like you could just use your uh, utility cooldowns and... That's it, look, uh, it's so much easier. No one's losing any HP, you're already here, you're not running, you're not looking for people, no one is LOS. And look, her shield is her shield is gone. We interrupted her. These mobs are not even here yet, and she's almost dead. And then that's it, and this is where you pop hero. We didn't hear we didn't have hero for this, but you get the idea. And that was it. And that is a uh, pre-area of the sacred flame, man. Um yeah, I'm not sure what they're gonna do with this boss. Overall, as I said, I really like this dungeon. I think it's good. Uh, I felt a little bit on the tuned. Uh, I think this boss is pretty awesome. I kind of like the idea of it. I wonder if they're gonna fix that staircase thing because that's pretty exploitative, I guess you could say, or really cheesy. Kind of breaks the whole boss. I don't know what Blizzard intentions was with this boss, but I know it's gonna be pain and tyrannical. Either way, guys, thank you so much for checking this video out. If you found it, if you found it interesting, informative, or entertaining, please hit like, subscribe, and I will be seeing you guys soon in the next future videos. Peace out, guys, and have a good one.